welcome guys to another edition of philosophy online lecture our uh, course for today is uh, philosophy language and communication i want to look at the uh, uh, problem of meaning and concentrating more on the uh, uh, the theories of meaning that will be put forward by philosophers in order to tackle the meaning of meaning now when we say the meaning of meaning we actually want to understand the concept of meaning because you know it, it, it is a major problem in communication when i say something like i'm trying to explain something to you people now it's not as if i'm going to put out all those words on my mind to you people there will surely be some remainders and when you receive those words there is a way you are going to encode it, decode it right and give meaning to those things that i say so now the so there's always a problem in meaning now uh when we say st make statement like i understand what to say right it means that uh, meaning is an important part of every communication process and it, it plays a major role in every communication process now uh where, 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 uh, and this simply means that whenever you are trying to tell somebody something either you are using language signs or symbols you attach some sense into those statements and now for the other person that is listening to you to be able to get your message if there is no sense in those statements that person cannot get that message therefore there won't be a meaning to those things that you are saying now the idea of meaning could be either linguistic that is in terms of words in terms, in terms of grammar or extra linguistic it's, it can be linguistic when it has to do with you using words to communicate with people and expecting them to derive a meaning from those words you communicate to them now it's it is extra linguistic when you don't have to use uh, uh linguistic expressions that is and uh, words you get but uh, you, it might be you trying to ask someone to derive a meaning from a phenomenon that you did not see like okay what what do, what what can you interpret from the behavior of that man are you getting it so it, it's not from your word now it is from the behavior of such person maybe the body language it could also be you might be asking that uh, what what was the morals that you got from that movie that you watched so these are uh, extra linguistic uh, uh expressions uh, and it could also be uh, what you did is uh, what you are, uh, understand from a natural condition like when you see that the cloud is getting darker you might deduce that the, the rain is about to do what's to fall now it could also be pragmatic in the sense that you the uh, uh, the consequences of some actions okay or of or of some concepts right now for example when they say uh a, a song was drenched by the rain you can decode the fact that that person might be feeling cold or wet that is the after effect of those things right now having looked at this uh, looked at this we, we could see that uh, meaning is very very important now in philosophy there is a serious concern with the nature and understanding of what meaning means we, philosophers try to uh, uh, critically look at what does meaning mean because uh, uh when there is a wrong interpretation of meaning it, it could cause problem and more problem when that wrong interpretation leads you to do uh, get involved in an action that could result in, in a problem now for example when uh, if the hoc says that uh the lecturer for the 110 exam is not around now some people could term it as okay the lecturer is not around some people could also look at that statement and say okay because this lecturer is not around that means uh, that exam will not hold or maybe that class will not hold she gets now so it could have when you misinterpret statements when you give a wrong interpretations to uh, the meaning of a, a word or a concept or an idea it could cause problem now Okay, so that is why philosophers uh, tend to understand the, the nature uh, of what meaning means, right? So, uh, 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 the, the, some uh, misinterpretation could be derived from ambiguities and vagueness, which are common to language. You know, there are some words that are ambiguous. When we say words are ambiguous, they have more than one meaning. 
she gets. Now, a word like cow could mean an animal, and also it could mean something else. I think, yes, there's, there's another meaning for the word cow. And, uh, for example, uh, book also, it could be ambiguous because book could mean an exercise book. Book could mean pleasing order. She gets. So, mis uh, interpretations could arise from ambiguities or vagueness which are common to language. Now, uh, uh, when we talk about vague statements, we are talking about statements that are not, you can't, you can't, you can't give a particular or exact uh, pointer to that word, right? Now, an example is when they say a man is rich. Now, rich to what extent? Is he, uh, is he a thousand near or is he a millionaire or is he a billionaire? She gets. Now, those are vague statements, statements that you can't uh, uh, attach a particular uh, a pointer to the level or to the extent of that statement. Okay, so uh, that is uh, what what cause misinterpretations, right? Ambiguities and vagueness that are common in language. Now, this is why philosophers have to do what has to look and study what meaning actually is now so uh, let's take uh, the, uh, the statement of one uh, scholar he said that that certain kinds of mark and noises have meaning and that we human beings grab those meaning without even thinking about it as striking facts right there are so uh, there, there are some words or, or, or statements or signs that we hear and we immediately we attach meaning to those things is, is a striking fact, fact that meaning is an important function of what communication now so he's saying that a philosophical theory of meaning should explain what it is for a string of mark or noises to be meaningful that is to tell us how those things become meanings right become meaningful and uh, what it is in virtue of which the string has a distinctive meaning that it that it does that it's what makes that thing as a, a meaning that is that it has, right? Now, he, he went further by saying the theory, that is those philosophical theory of meaning, should also explain how it is possible for human beings to produce and understand meaningful utterance and doing that so effortlessly. Now, you could see, uh, we could sit down and gather and we might be discussing about something and we, we are saying those things uh, quickly, then we people that are listening to us are understanding those things, like a group discussion, like maybe an event that happened or, 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 or in politics, then I, I'm saying that, ah, Tunubu is very goody, he, he cannot enter, also, so Tunubu is the best candidate, and so, and then you attach meaning to those things, you respond back, we do that so effortlessly. So now he's saying that uh, there should be a philosophical, philosophical theory of meaning that explains how it is possible for us to do all these things effortlessly. Now, so, now he's, he's saying that uh, understanding the nature of meaning is different from understanding the human capacity to produce speech. Now, uh, it, it is possible for us to produce speech, but it is not all these speech that are meaningful. So now we need to understand the nature of meaning. Now let's take a look at some of these statements. Now the first statement is singing long, singing long party in Sessant University. What meaning do you derive from that statement? You see? Uh, it, 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 it contains language, it contains word, but together when I said those things, it doesn't give us a grammatical sense. Now look at this statement. Everybody has the right to disenfranchise him, him or herself. Now this statement connotes a meaning. And why does it connect a meaning? It is because uh, there are sentences in, in, that word, uh, in that statement that I made or there are words in that statement that I made that have meaning on their own. And when put together, they make sense. Now, an another example is J H J H B Z H J H J S. Now, does that have any meaning? Nothing. It's like uh, little children saying, you cannot connote a meaning from that thing. So, what uh, Lincoln, uh, that same scholar, now says that for he now listed some data. For us to consider now, uh, the, the, for he said that this uh, list 
is what we have to, uh, to consider in the philosophical study of language. Now, the first one is some string of, of marks or noises are meaningful sentence, right? Some strings of, of, of marks or noises are meaningful sentence. It is not all linguistic expression that are meaningful sentence. It is some, some are meaningful sentence, right? Now, each meaningful sentence has parts that are themselves meaningful. Now, for example, let's go back to that example I made. Everybody has the right to self emphasize him or herself. Everybody has a meaning on its own. Right has a meaning on its own. This emphasize has a meaning on its own. So these are some of the things we have to look out to when we do the philosophical study of language. Now, another point is that each meaningful sentence means something in particular. Now, those th 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 everybody has a right to self emphasize him or herself as a meaning in particular, that is, we have the freedom to either to vote or not to vote, right? Now, lastly, I said that this is the last that I have to consider that competent speakers of a language are able to understand many of that language sentences without effort and almost instantly. Now, they, they also produce those statements in the same way. That is, people who are speakers of such language, maybe English language, uh, should be able to understand statement from that language and also should be able to provide meaningful statements from that language okay so now having said all this what what is the nature of meaning that we communicate with each other how do we know that meaning has been conveyed in our communication are meaning entities if there are entities what kind of entities are they now are they similar to properties that we see like chairs tables and so on Right. Okay. Now, if you say meaning are no entities, then what are those? What are they? Now, this is why philosophers have constructed several theories that attempt to explain the nature of meaning and meaningful sentence. Now, it is these theories that I want to concentrate on. Now, the first one is the referential theory. I'm going to be explaining in a way that we are going to understand it better this the theories of meaning the first one is the referential theory and the propagators of this theory states that meaning is actually what that is a linguistic expression actually means in reality now not in the word itself but what that thing that word that statement actually mean in reality for example if i say i am in school it is a word on its own but what that word actually means in reality is that I am my body, my mind, my soul is present here in school. Now, so if you want to, the the uh, propaganda of this theory is saying that if you want to give meaning to words, we have to look at what those expressions stand for in reality, and not just in uh, in the word themselves, right? Now, an example is, is used here is uh, when uh, an example of the book is under the table. Now. There's book, there's under, there's table. Now, in reality, when it is looked at, we get to see that there's a book under the table. Another word is the University of Ibadan. Now, this uh, linguistic expression is meaningful because it represents a particular entity. And what is that entity? A, a higher institution of learning. That is the University of Ibadan. In reality, it is a higher institution of learning. So, now, this theory is influential because it seems natural as an explanation of what gives linguistic expression meaning, right? Now, the, 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 there's a problem with this theory because uh, there are some philosophical problems in it in the sense that as we have names of things that denote real things in life, like, for example, book is actually something that exists, right? Now, comb. Is actually what exists. Water is actually what exists. There are also some words, uh, or some uh, naming words that uh, do, those things that we can't say they actually exist. They are, like they are abstract. Like for example, if they say uh, ghost, you get it. Now we all say ghost, right? Like uh, when someone say a ghost is coming, right? Ghost is something that you cannot see. I get it. So there is a problem in using words that we cannot actually attach to uh, to to, uh, to an existing thing. For example, when someone say uh, a ghost is a very 
a disturbed spirit. Now, a ghost is a disturbed spirit. Now, a, a, in reality, what does that ghost represent? Because we can't see it, so we can't actually attach meaning to such statements. So that is referential theory. Referential theory is simply that an expression is what the expression stands for in reality and not just in the word itself. Now, the second theory is the idea theory. And what these people are actually uh, saying is simple. They're saying that an expression is what is constituted in the mind of that person who makes that statement. Now, this is not in reality, but in what is it on, actually on the mind of that person. Now, for example, I might say I am in lasso. In reality, I am in lasso. It's different from me say, saying that I want to study in lasso. In reality, I am not studying in reality, uh, in lasso, sorry, but it is on my mind that I want to study in lasso. So these people are saying that ideas, uh, uh, meaning are given to expression through what is actually the ideas that is on that person's mind, that that person wish to communicate. But the problem with this theory is that it is mostly private. Communication in this aspect is mostly private. It is not everything that is on someone's mind that someone will say. Are you getting it? So because it is too private, there's always an issue of meaning in this theory, right? Okay, so uh, that is that on the idea theory. I'm seeing if I can actually read out something for you. Okay, they say in this sense, a, list, a linguistic expression is not meaningful because it stands for a state of a fear in reality. That is not meaningful because it creates a picture of something in reality. Rather, it is meaningful because it represents a particular idea a particular notion on that uh, on the speaker mind which the speaker intend to communicate to the listener so meaning is given to what actually is uh, uh, that idea that is on our mind okay so that is the idea theory of meaning now the next one is the use theory and these ones are saying that uh, linguistic expressions are no entity what they are, this propaganda uh, of this theory is are saying is that meaning is attached to those expression in throughout the speakers of those expression use those expression now let me explain for example a, a, a computer speaker of yoruba language could say uh shibi right now shibi the is used to explain uh, to denote what a a, 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 an, a tool used in eating, right? Now, to Yoruba, that word shibi is used for connoting something, a, a, a tool used in eating. Now, to another language, right, shibi could mean something else. So what these uh, uh, theorists are saying is that we have to look at meaning from the way those words are actually used by the computer speakers. That is how the speakers of those words actually use those words. Because there are some words that uh, the English speaker could use, right? But when a Yoruba person uses those words, it could mean something different. So we are actually looking at the meaning of those words in context of what, how it is being used by those, by the computer speaker, competent speakers of those uh, language, right? Now, okay, so that is that on the use theory. Now, let me get something out here. Now, uh, the the theory, this theory claims that the meaning of linguistic expression can be found in the use which the which the expression serves. Now, they said that a, uh, in other words, a word or an expression means what the competent user of that language says it means. Now, what a Yoruba person say she be means is what she be means, right? So that is what they are saying. Now, what uh, uh, the, an example is used there uh, when they say kitchen for a computer speaker of English language means a place where cooking is done, right? So it is what those competent speakers of that language says that something means that it actually means. Okay, so that is the use theory. I hope you understand. Now, the last one is uh, okay, sorry, the second to the last one is the verification theory. And what these ones are simply saying that meaning can be derived, derived from statements when we actually have a process at which we can use to validate 
the uh, expressions. Now, for example, for example, if they say some students are having an exam in FA 001, and you know that it is possible for you to walk down and look at FA 001 and see that people are studying, then you can, uh, meaning can be gotten from that statement. That is the process, uh, if there is a method at which you can validate those statements, those expressions, then you can, uh, meaning is achievable. Now, the, the, uh, 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 a statement can be made that uh, rain is falling in lucky. Short statements won't have meaning because you can't, if there is no process at which you can validate if actually rain is falling in lucky. So because there's no process at which you can validate that, that means that statement, again, is falling in lucky, is not meaningful. But if there's a process at which you can validate, maybe you want to call someone to ask, is again falling in lucky, right? And that person say, yes, again, is falling in lucky. Okay, that is when you can now accept and say, okay, oh, again, is actually falling in lucky. So what this theory is saying is that uh, the, a, a, a linguistic expression is meaningful when there's a method which leads to the verification of that expression. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the uh, that that is that one verification uh, theory. Okay, now the last one is the pragmatic theory, and the pragmatic theory is uh, uh, saying that the meaning of a statement is actually determined by the consequence consequences of the application of that statement. That is, uh, the meaning is derived when you can apply short statements and the results that you're going to get from applying that statement. Now, uh, by implication of this, a pragmatic theory is not concerned with the relationship between a statement or an intentional experience and an objective reality which the statement is supposed to correspond to. Rather, meaning derived from the relationship between the statement and human experience. That is, meaning is gotten when we look at the effects the uh, the application of that statement what's the result from the application of that statement that is when we can get meaning right or, or from, from that statement okay now for example when they say uh the rice was just cooked now now when you eat that rice and you feel, feel that ah this rice is auto then you can now say okay yes because from that the human experience that you have from that statement that the rice was just cooked, then you can now ascertain that okay, that statement is actually meaningful. Please note that you don't confuse it with that verification. You know, where I did not say that the rice is hot. There's someone at the stage and I say that yes, the guys is hot. The person is saying that the rice is just was just cooked now. Then you now eat it, then you now say, ah, this guy is hot. Okay, that is that statement that has been uh, you have experienced it. There has been an implication from that statement. And that is how you have practicalized it, right? Uh, you have put in practical to determine if that statement is actually meaningful, okay? So now, they are saying that uh, the meaning for pragmatic uh, uh, theory involves three terms. A sign, right? That is a sign, maybe a, a, a word that are uh, spoken, right? What do those words stand for? Right, and the response or effect produced by those signs or those words. So, this, those three things are, to, are what constitute the relations of meaning. Now, meanings, meaning is incomplete when one of these is missing. When they, uh, there is a sign and there is no, uh, there is nothing that that sign stands for, then meaning is incomplete. But meaning is complete when there is a sign and there is what that sign stands for. And there is an effect or a response or a reaction produced by that sign. So that is that on uh, the theories of meaning. The first one is the referential theory that has to do with uh, not what that expression means, but what is actually uh, the picture, the reality aspect of that expression. We also have the next one, the idea theory. And this one is saying that meaning is attached to what is just actually on the sender's mind, what is actually on the mind of that person that wish to communicate something. Now, the next one is the use theory. And this one is saying that a meaning is attached in the context of how the competent speakers of that language use those words. And the next one, we have the verification theory. And where these ones are saying that if there's a, post, a process 
or method at which we can verify statements, then we can actually say that statement is meaningful. And then the last one, the pragmatic, who are saying that meaning must uh, uh, there, there must be relations of meaning. That is, there must be a sign, there must be what that sign stands for, and there must be after effects of uh, what that sign produces. She gets. So that is that on the problem of uh, meaning and the theories of meaning. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you.